ನಮಿ ಧನ್ವಂತರಿ ಮಾಿದೇವ ಸುರಸುರೈರ್ವಂದಿತ ಪಾದಪದ್ಮ ಲೋಕೈರ್ಜರಾರುಭಯ ಮೃತ್ಯುನಾಶ ಧಾತಾರಮೀಶ ವಿವಿಧೌಷಧಿ yogesh sir has given a very critical topic that he wants me to talk on metabolic syndrome and ayurved management so the word metabolic syndrome has been very restricted in itself a modern medicine or western medicine what we call whereas the scope here we can see the uniqueness of ayurved that the scope for metabolic syndrome is huge in ayurved so the principles of diagnosis and management here we have to club modern medicine go into the pathophysiology of ayurved in metabolic disorders or santar panjanya vyadhi into the pathophysiology of modern medicine how can we it be matched and how can we it managed correctly that we have to see so when we talk about metabolic syndrome so metabolic syndrome refers to the co-occurrence of several known cardiovascular risk factor insulin resistance obesity atherogenesis dyslipidemia and hypertension when the word comes metabolic syndrome in today's era definitely only these type of disorders come into the picture or come before the eyes that yes when it's a metabolic syndrome either the person is having insulin resistance and due to insulin resistance may be having obesity and cardiovascular disorder these are the complications of insulin resistance so whenever we say that it is a metabolic syndrome the metabolic syndrome is not the ultimate diagnosis that we have to consider it is never the ultimate diagnosis out of the metabolic syndrome certain genetic due to the genetic expression different type of disorders are created maybe some may be having obesity some may be having hypertension some may be having a stroke so so the basic disease behind is insulin resistance due to that there can be a microvascular disorder and due to microvascular disorder there can be a organ damage or there can be a pathology so this very important thing is to be noted that underlying cause is to be addressed very perfectly when we are managing metabolic disorder and it's highly unfortunate that the underlying cause is ignored so a comprehensive definition is required when we talk about metabolic syndrome and ayurved management a comprehensive definition is required that is the definition for the metabolic syndrome and its key features would facilitate research for its causes and hopefully lead to the new insights into pharmacological and lifestyle treatment approaches very very important it is only pharmacological applications into metabolic disorders may be through ayurved or may be through modern medicine will not give a correct answer to us in metabolic disorders along with the pharmacological applications we have to even apply lifestyle management and lifestyle treatments up till now we were talking about lifestyle managements but now we should talk about lifestyle treatments management when it comes it is it is optional for the patient okay doctor has advised it we will follow or we will not follow we have to take the drugs compulsory it's not like that but when a really when we want to treat metabolic disorders even lifestyle treatments are to be given they are also made to compulsory along with the pharmacological med pharmacological medicines then and then only we can have an correct output of the disease so when we talk about again a metabolic disorders that <clears throat> there are certain criteria that hip rest ratio everybody knows the criteria rest ratio should be this and that hyperglycemic status should be there blood pressure should not go above certain levels hdl cholesterol ldl cholesterol total cholesterol triglycerides so all we talk about only these things and these things are means basically what we see is a lipids and lipid profile but lipid profile when we go through ayurved 
we will understand now only lipid profile has a very very limited scope to treat metabolic disorders because lipid profile doesn't show how much oxidation into ldl is taking place lipid profile will not show whether the person is made asar or made asar these are very very important concepts which are to be focused when we are managing metabolic disorders obesity like diseases through ayurved management so these type of biomarkers or these type of investigation they are really very superficial when when it is coming to a super specialty clinics when it is it is coming to the consultants when we are counseling the patient when we are consulting the patient in metabolic disorders these parameters are very very superficial and don't come to help to to uh, treat or to consider the metabolic disorder and the depth of the metabolic disorders into the patient whereas ayurveda has clearly defined that sarva eva nija vikara nanya tarda vat pitta ka phe bhu nirvartate eta hi shakuni sarva so they have clearly clearly mentioned that all these metabolic diseases come from the ashtodari adhyay though have they have, they have mentioned in ashtodari adhyay it is very very clear that in each and every niche disorder niche vyadhis there should be a vitiation of vata pitta and kapha so they say that as a bird cannot infringe upon the shadow by flying throughout the day the same way the disease are produced by the disturbance in the equilibrium of the dhatu and cannot occur without the vitiation of vata pitta and kapha so whenever we talk about metabolic disorders through ayurved we have to think about the agnis that two be most important are the bhuta agnis dhatu agnis jinjata all the agnis are to be focused many a time what happens when we talk about the agnis either we think of the jadha agni we think about the dhatu agni we never think of the bhuta agnis which are very very important in this context so these agnis are to be taken into consideration we have to take take into consideration the dominance of the vitiation of the vata pitta and kapha and along with that we have to the inflammation is at the coordination so they say that vyayam anashanam chinta rukshalpa pramitashanam vat abhayam shoko ruksha panam so when it comes to metabolic disorder modern medicine says that it is a genetic there are genetic expressions or it is a lifestyle disorder mainly they say it is a lifestyle disorder and in lifestyle disorder vyayamo anashanam vyayamo anashanam chinta ruksha alpa pramitashana so chinta bhaya shok these are also should be considered when we are treating such type of disorder and i have to say that kapha shunta tumcha avitam kalo bhutopagrash gnatavya shaya hetavah so when there is ojak shay also metabolic disorders come into the picture so not only vitiation of vata dosha or pitta and kapha or deformities into the dhatus but also the ojak shay is also very very important in creating metabolic disorder now in tarak they have clearly classified the metabolic disorders there are some metabolic disorders are heterogeneous that i have given in the different colors you can see it some are the complications of other diseases some are lifestyle disorders some are due to the wrong dietary factors and some are due to the antenatal and postnatal factors so as we said that, that metabolic disorder different type of causes has been classified very very correctly when we talk about the niche and all niche vyadhis as per my understanding should be considered into metabolic disorders because the domain of metabolic disorders as per ayurved is vast as considered with the modern metabolic disorders what they promote so these type of heterogeneous factors complications of other disease lifestyle dietary factors and anti natal and post natal factors are to be uh, considered and they clearly say that stool prusham madhyam bhedena deha bhedena they have clearly when it comes to obesity Shushrut has clearly mentioned that there are three types of people, three types of personalities. That is thula, krusha, madhya. So, uh, the, again, investigating the patients for metabolic disorders and obesity, we have to identify which type of paper that person is, which type of frame that person have. So, thula, krusha, and madhya. These are the three types of frame, frames. 
which has been elaborated by Sushrut. Still today also we consider these three type of frames and then we have to fit the person coming to us into this type of frame. Now, very interesting there is that certain crucial patient can also be obese. That we call as thin obese person where they have a vitiated of Medha Dhatu. So, frames are to be considered as per the frames also the diseases can, the managements can vary. So, today in the today what we do, we do, we classify the patient into obese obese patient and a thin obese patient. So, a crucial or Madhya frame of patient person can also be obese as per the blood parameters. Or a person who is stula, looking stula or obese may not need any treatment because he may be a medasara. These things are to be classified very, very correctly. So coming, bringing the Ayurved concepts and modern concepts together, it becomes very, very easy and profound to treat the patient and manage the patients of metabolic disorders. Again, Sushri said, Karshayet Brahe Chapi, Sthada, so he says that the homeostasis is to be maintained. The madhyam frame is to be maintained. If a person is krusha, make him stula a bit. But when the person is krusha, make him stula, it is, I think it should be a, a qualitative thing, not a quantitative thing. So krusha and krusha is to be converted into uh, brahan and tura to be converted into krusha. So that is a, what we can uh, call as, as a quantitative, qualitative thing. So then when it is again diagnosing metabolic disorders. The most important thing what we miss, we go through lipid profiles. When cholesterol is raised, when HDL, LDL is raised, we, we, we say it is a high risk, but we don't see that whether the LDL is oxidized or not. Unless and until the LDL is getting oxidized, it will not create any any pathological conditions in early stages. So how to manage it? So that's why saratwa, saratwa is very, very important of that specific tissue or made where we, when it comes to the metabolic syndrome or obesity, such type of disorder. Sarash chetyado, sarash abdena, vishuddha uttaro dhatu ruchyate. So the most healthy quality of the tissue should be considered before checking and treating the patient for a particular disease. That's very important. Similarly, before interpreting blood or diagnostic parameters, sarata should be considered. It's very, very important whether how, and it has been explained in Vimansan that sarata, they are very clearly explained that should be considered when we are interpreting the modern medicine diagnostic test. Sarada should be taken into consideration. Modern medicine, medicine parameters routinely used and the biomarker used in diagnostic as well in research of Ayurved research are insufficient and many times are inappropriate to decide the diagnosis, prognosis and treatment of the patient as per Ayurved. I am very, very clear with this sentence that modern medicine parameters routinely used and the biomarker used in the diagnosis as well as in the research of Ayurved are insufficient and many times inappropriate to decide the diagnosis. Now, when I go through the various theses, various dissertations, many a times only a simple, for example, uh, inflammation is never addressed. And we, if we want to address the inflammation, other parameters are both is taken as inflammation. But when we want, you have only 10 days to study the inflammation or 15, 20 days to study the you have to take the very sensitive parameters. Similarly, when it comes to obesity, there are many dissertations which has come in obesity. And the most important parameter in obesity, which was taken, is the weight. Weight is the most raw parameter because the most important concern of treating obesity is as per the this definition is not to make an obese person a thin person, but here the definition should be to make the obese unhealthy person a obese healthy person. What happens majority of the time that majority of the people when they come to weight reduction and obesity, we only have a target of weight reduction. And if the person is made a sar, it's very, very tough to do, uh, reduce the weight of that person. And that person is highly active. There are no comorbidities of the obesity at that point, at the situation with that patient. So at that time, whatever are the parameters, so we, what we have to see, there are different type of parameters we have to look in rather than weight. And 
when a expected weight loss is 30 kg 40 kg what we do in our clinics it can't happen in a dissertation of one month and two months. and that's why our way of thinking the pharmacological activity of the drugs what we are using the way of logical thinking of the activities of the pharmacology then it goes it it turns to be wrong so we have to select a very very correct biomarker we have to select a very very critical investigative parameter when we are treating it with the ayurved management that's very important so physicians may sometimes take wrong decision only by looking at the patient such as the patient is strong because of being corpulent or he is because because of leanness so we should not go as per the frame though sushrut has given the three types of frames of the body but only frame of the bodies are not important it is observed that some person having small body and leanness are strong like the small hands carrying a big load this is the again a quotation coming from nature <coughs> so it's very very important as so such type of things are to be addressed in the clinics and as uh, also to be addressed in the research dissertations when we are going to the, through the studies so how to select the meda sarata very important that while selection of the patient we have to consider meda sarata so how to select and what can be the biomarker this is a big question when we are managing obesity so many a times it happens that a simple lipid profile like just i told you simple lipid profile and on the basis of lipid profile we decide whether my treatment is working or not and majority of the time those people even those people who are massively obese they have a very very normal lipid profile cholesterol triglycerides ldl are quite normal still then why is the why that person is obese so here the biomarkers which are to be taken or for example i have taken certain tik tarasatmak medicine or i have taken gugulu as, as my as my research drug then by my, my biomarker will vary as per the drug and the, as per the mode of action of that drug which is to be taken another thing which i have to i will forget it telling because i have not included in the slide another thing what i have to tell is the whatever the lekhan medicines which has been mentioned and whatever they have defined as lekhan medicines they every medicine have a different mode of action they don't work as same they have a different mode of action some medicines may be having some activity on the skeletal muscles they may be having insulin stimulating insulin receptor stimulating activity some may be working on the fatty livers or there they may be working on the insulin sensitivity fatty liver first hit of the fatty liver some may be antioxidant activity specific to the meda tissues or meda dhatu so these different type of uh, activities are there as per their activity we have to select the biomarker so here when it comes to obesity the best of the biomarker is either adiponectin or it can be if we are thinking that the patient may have inflammatory changes at the cellular level then we have to go for high sensitive c reactive protein so these can be biomarkers what this biomarker can tell so whatever xyz the drug i am using in my dissertation or in my practice or for the patients that can suggest the mode of action that how the drug is reducing the weight of the patient it's very important one thing i have to tell you that we are highly technical people ayurved people are highly technical people so we should know the at least logical we should know the exact I, i'll tell you we should know the exact mode of action how the medicine is working but at least logically you should think that how whatever if i am giving arugya vargini and the patient is reducing 7 8 kg weight how the weight has might have reduced due to arugya vargini that i should be able to explain by both the ways by the ayurved uh, dravya gunashastra or rasavira dipak and prabha or by the uh, pharmac uh, what we call as phyto pharmacology so these two ways we should know it very perfectly how it is working so a single adiponectin can tell you that whether there is a inflammation at a cellular level whether there the obese person has a tendency of atherogenesis or whether there is a insulin resistance in the patient at the cellular level so all these three things can be told by a single adiponectin level single adiponectin can have can tell us that how the drug is working and how the patient is reducing and what risk we are we are taking with the patient similarly there are different type of biomarkers in all it may be hypercholesteremia it may be uh, what we can call as a uh, hyper homocysteinemia so there are different type of metabolic disorders we have to
unless and until we are finding the underlying cause, unless and until we are finding into the saratva of that specific dhatu. For example, hyper homocysteinemia. We have to see whether there is a, a sarata. That's very important. So similarly, this type of diagnosis are to be made and then the patient is to be treated. Then coming to the Santarpanjas, because metabolic disorders are anabolic disorders. And there is a new one big chapter dedicated by Charakin Sutrasthan that is a Santarpan and So Santarpati yes, Nikdaihi, Madhuraihi, Guru Pichri. They have mentioned the causes. Still today they are the same. Navanan Deshya Mansesha Anupavari Jahi, Gora Sahi, Godakaisha Nahi, Pashtikasha Atimatrishaha, and Cheshta Dveshi, Divasapna Shaya, Asana Sukhairataha. So they are very, very clearly mentioned the causes of metabolic disorder, very clearly mentioned. And then Prameha Pidaka Kotha, Kandu Pandu Amaya Jura. See now, if I say that Pandu is an anabolic disorder, how many people will believe me? non ayurvedic people, they will not believe it. It is not anabolic. But here, Pandu like diseases, Jura like diseases, all these Mutra Kucha like diseases, Pushta like diseases, these are all taken into even Klaibya due to Stholia. I am going, I have put some four or five slides into it. Very important slides. So Klaibyam, Atistholyam, Alasyam, Guruga, all these are metabolic disorders and these are to be treated as per the Santar Panjane Vyadi. That should be very, very clear. So, for example, if we take the example of Klaibyam Atistholyam Alaste, Klaibyam, that is infertility or erectile dysfunction due to obesity, the treatment will vary. Total different treatment is there. But if it is only erectile dysfunction where the Medhadhatu is absolutely normal, totally different treatment is there. But if I sit and if I give Crouch Beach and Ashwagandha and all these uh, Vajikaran Aushadha in Stholya, they will not work. patient very correctly. That's the importance of this uh, knowing metabolic disorders and underlying pathology of that. So they have even given the treatments and naranam dipete agni smrutir buddhish chavardate. So the most important thing when we talk about metabolic disorders is because today is not the lecture on arm and agni. I'm not going to focus more on it. But definitely we have to consider the samata of the vyadi. We have to consider the agni mandya. And at every level, we have to consider Agni Madhya. Each and every level, at the Jathar Agni, at Bhuta Agni, and the Dhatva Agni level, we have to consider the Agni Madhya into Santarpanjan diseases. Yes, I'm touching the chapter point Agni because I'm not going too much elaborate you know, into it. So, <clears throat> similarly, Apatarpanjan Vedis are also mentioned. And they are also means every catabolic diseases is out of anabolism. That is the main theory of modern medicine. Every catabolism comes out of anabolism. And here, if you see the list, these are all coming out of the anabolic problems. And then they are told as apatarpanjar or catabolic diseases. Just I want to focus. Then what is the missing link? Very important. That what are the missing link between modern medicine and Ayurveda if you want to club it together really and how we have to work. Now, in this slide, I am just focusing the underlying biochemical principles of modern medicine which are not addressed when, when, when we are giving the treatment. Concept of oxidative stress, not addressed at all. It is a theory of modern medicine. It is not our theory. We are, we are just stretching our theories and just that the, our this theory is related to oxidative stress. We are telling like that. But this is basically a modern medicine or modern science, not forget medicine, it's a modern science theory. Mitochondrial dysfunction in metabolic disorders, modern science theory. Endoplasmic reticulum stress, low grade inflammation, maturity of the disease. As we say that Rogaha Sarvepi Mandagnu, modern medicine says each and every disorder is attributed to the low grade inflammation. So, low grade inflammation, nutrition excess, the most important thing, which is never, when the word nutrition comes, everybody thinks of eating, everybody, nobody, nobody thinks of controlling it. When we are working in obesity, area of obesity, we come across many modern medicine doctors. We have to face this problem that we said, don't eat it. This is not good. The combinations are wrong. The portion size is wrong. Where it is written. It is there. So nutrition excess, nutrition concept is very good. But nowadays people are doing, are dying due to feasting, not due to fasting. That's very important. That is the excess of food consumption. So nutrition excess, 
and then malnutrition that is the advanced glycation end products and receptor of advanced glycation end products these are not at all considered when we are treating metabolic disorders through modern medicine and the circadian car rhythms what we call as a dinacharya these are all modern medicine theories which are not at all focused and here what are the ayurved theories then concept of agni concept of arm concept of dusham desham balam kalam prakriti mandal this is the big concepts so food and lifestyle portion size and exercise capacity viruddhana and malina ahar then dinacharya and rutucharya so these are the total because why this i have putting for this concept because metabolic disorders are all yap diseases continuous treatments are required continuous managements are required and when a patient has to undergo a continuous management throughout the life then these managements play important role when the patient has to take medicines for 5 weeks 6 weeks 1 month 2 months okay we can focus more on the pharmacological except concept of the medicines or pharmacological aspects of the medicine but when it is a yapke vyadhi we have to take the medicines in a continuous way then all other factors are to be considered and if the missing link is linked with each other if the oxidative stress agni um, mitochondrial dysfunction um, endocrine uh, reticulum stress low grade inflammation all these are linked to the ayurved theories these are not complete ayurved theories just for the example i have put forth if these are linked very very correctly i'll give a example of age and rage very very important example of viruddhahar malinahar everywhere in metabolic disorders the word viruddhahar comes and we clearly ignore it i have seen many people many people who consume milk who consume viruddhahar which is mentioned itself in ayurved there are many ayurved doctors who consume wine and cheese together this is already viruddhahar there are many people who consume fruit juices in the early uh, uh, morning this is viruddhahar we have seen many people consuming milk juices uh, sorry milk shakes and non vegetarian food together i have seen many people who are consuming who are marinating non veg they marinate along with curds that is a viruddhahar so all this viruddhatva what it happens and why it is viruddha that is to be explained and fortunately at now at present we can explain it very correctly with the help of molecular biology with the help of biochemistry we can clearly explain that why this is age and why this is rage that is why it is advanced glycation end products and how it is hampering the metabolic disorders then the most important concept gut flora nobody is targeting except ayurved people nobody is targeting it and gut flora is to be targeted very very correctly unless and until the gut flora is targeted the short chain fatty acids which are coming out of the inflamed intestine and situated in the and getting situated into the liver that will never stop no ayurved medicine can stop it just lifestyle can stop it but but along with the lifestyle if you are using haridra if you are using certain medicines like kalmeg because they have we have worked on it that can alter the gut flora and that can stop the inflammation of the intestine and stop the short chain fatty acids coming out of the intestine and going to the liver so these are the missing missing links main missing links in metabolic disorders these are to be focused when we are diagnosing and we are when we are managing the problems so when what are the missing links in ayurved research the selection of the comparative group these are the missing problems when because whatever the research we are putting forth and whatever the papers are coming into our our students will go will follow those papers so if i compare for example if i am comparing two rasayans which are not at all equal with each other that is a wrong comparison if i am comparing brahmi with ashwagandha if i am comparing jeshtamit with gulvel these are totally different rasayan and if i if both the thing i am taking in the comparing group then it will lead to a different research we can prove the immunomodulatory effect but we can't prove the rasayan effect in such comparative group in metabolic disorders selection of the parameters selection of the biomarkers and dosing and the dosing time that is a chronopharmacology that is aushadha sevan kal and the dose these are the missing links in ayurved research coming to the metabolic disorders and coming to the obesity diagnosis and ayurved management now <clears throat> till date now we have crossed 
50,000 plus patients treating obesity, where we have helped a patients to reduce up to uh, maximum 59 kg weight. We have given a weight reduction of 59 kg and juvenile obesity, we have given a weight reduction up to 54 kg. These are some patients who have reduced weight. And this you can see now the scenario is going as the sedentary lifestyle is increasing and increasing, the person is becoming fatter and fatter. So the change, there is a change in scenario that the obesity, it increases with age, more prevalent among lower socioeconomic and lower income groups with particular strong social gradients towards women. This is the, what we are making the, we are trying to define it very correctly. Again, we are defining obesity as a chronic, lifelong, genetically related, life-threatening disease. Even Charak has said the same thing. He has also said that obesity is a life-threatening disease, highly significant medical, psychological, social, physical and economical comorbidities are there. Charak has also mentioned the comorbidities of obesity very clearly and today also we can see those comorbidities. So basically it is a life-threatening disease. It will not harm immediately. But definitely there can be a social, psychological impact will be there. There will be economical comorbidities may be there. It is a highly significant medical condition. Unfortunately, up till now, obesity has not been classified as a disease. It is the only the status of the body. Even insurance companies, in they are not giving uh, clearance for the obesity when they are admitted in the hospital. But we have to write it hyperlipidemia, cholesteremia, diabetes, all the comorbidities we have to write. So this is how we define obesity. And <clears throat> then what has told that at least to less that it is a life threatening. They have clearly mentioned that Ayusharasaha, Javopurada, Kritcha Vivayata, Dorbalyam, Dorgandyam, Svedo Badha, Shrid Atimatram, Pipasat, Ati Yoga Sheti, Bhavantya Ashtadosha. These comorbidities they have clearly, clearly mentioned. And if we see the causes behind that, they have clearly mentioned that Ati Sampurna, Guru, Madhura, Sheeta, and Snigdha. See, the hierarchies are very important in Charak. Not only in Charak, with all the Sahitas, the hierarchies are, they have not mentioned Madhur and then Guru. They have mentioned Guru and Madhura. So, sugar-free substances or sugar-free sweets are all Guru. And what people ask, can we have sugar-free ice cream? Can we have sugar-free Shrikhand? No, not allowed. It is Guru. So, they have clearly, clearly mentioned Guru. Then they have taken all sweets and carbohydrates, Madhura. Then Sheetha and lastly Snigd. What we target first, they have taken the hierarchies on the last. But the most important thing is Guru and Madhur and then Sheetha and then Snigd. The Upayogat, Avayamat, Avayavayat, Divasopnat, Harshanityatvat, Chintanat, Vijasobhavat. Then they have also told that there is a genetic obesity. Fortunately, genetic obesity is not seen much in India. We can see genetic obesity in Western countries. I had been to Australia. So uh, many a times we see their genetic obesity is more prevalent over in these countries. But in India, we don't find genetic obesity. So when they say that medava eva upichite na tatare datavaha, what happens in obesity that only due to certain pathology, only medha dhatu is nourished and no other dhatu is nourished properly. This is the main management of obesity, not weight reduction. Everybody should understand this, that on weight reduction is not at all. It is the outcome of the management. Weight loss should be the outcome of the management. That's why people die. There's a, there is a shortening of life. This shaitilyas is also mentioned very clearly in Prameha. That there is a laxity in each and every tissue of the body. And this laxity can create end organ damage. Shaitilya, Saukumarya, Gurutvacha, Medaso, Javo, Parada. So this is how they have explained. And last they say that Atastadeva, Prayoho, Vardante, Nanya, Rasadayaha. No other tissue is nourished. Tad Abhibhutam Tad Vityartha, Tasmaditi, Vishamadhatutuat. So they, Chakrapani says that Tad Atastadeva, Prayoho, Vardante, Na Anye, Rasadayaha. So except the metadata, no other tissues are nourished in obesity. And that should be the focus of the management. That should be the line of the treatment that our all, all other tissues should also get a proper nourishment so the patient may not land into the comorbidities of the obesity. Okay. So now when we see that, 
when we when we talk about obesity we every time talk about the med dhatu but see what charak has said medo maunso ativruddhatvat we never consider med maunsa medo maunso ativruddhatvat chalaspika udarastana atha atha upachayo utsaho naro ati stula uchyate those who have excessive generation of med as well as mounds in specific areas like speak buttocks then abdomen and the breast that type of person is called as an obese person so henceforth when we are managing we have to target med as well as mounds that's very important when we talk about adipogenesis that is mild obese that is hypertrophic of fats there is hyperplastic fats so as per the fats we because many people because when everything we are doing it that we have to propagate ayurveda into the society when the people comes to the clinics people say i want to reduce only abdomen i want to reduce only breast i want to reduce only arms it is not possible there can be a generalized weight reduction spot weight reduction is not possible because the the quality of fats situated in the organs are totally different from each other so there is hyperplastic obesity there is hypertrophic obesity different type of classifications are made into obesity and <coughs> genetic obesity can also be there this genetic obesity which is chintanad bija swabhava jo upajayate this is clearly related with the leptin deficiency we have clearly mentioned bija swabhava to upajayate obesity runs in family due to the genetic disorders and it is related with the ob gene what is this ob gene it is a gene discovered which prevents production of leptin hormone normally released by adipose tissue and is released in the blood stream to inform the appetite center of the brain about the fat store level so what happens that it is a satiety hormone whenever i eat some food i get full after eating one chapati or a bowl of rice but my colleague when he finishes four cups of rice or four bowls of rice still he is unsatisfied it means that there is some problem with the genet with the uh, with the leptin and ghrelin ratio so this type of obesity where the patient doesn't get a satiety very early this type of obesity is labeled as a genetic obesity or which is related with the ob gene then it is also related with hypothyroidism acromegaly pcod so we will, today we are not related with those diseases so again when we come to the cause just i have elaborated very correctly that ati stolyam ati sampurnat guru madhura shita snigdha upayoga these are the things which are to be controlled very correctly i am going to focus in the coming slides so coming to the sampraptya of obesity मेदसा अवृत्त मार्गत्वात वायु कोष्ठे विशेषतः इट इज अब्स्ट्रक्टिव पैथोलॉजी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन टू दू द चैनल्स ऑफ द वायु मेदसा अवृत्त मार्गत्वात वायु कोष्ठे विशेषतः चरण संधु क्षय अग्नि आहारम शोषयत अति सो देर इज अट वी से देर इज अग्नि देर इज अपर फंक्शन चरण संधु क्षय अग्नि हाइपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ अग्नि एंड पेशेंट फील्स मच हंग्री मोर एंड मोर हंग्री द एपिटाइट इज इंक्रीज लाइक एन एथिंग satiety is not achieved so this sampraptya can be related either with strong insulin resistance or with leptin resistance at a hypothalamus level this way i think it is my opinion it is not compulsory that you should also think in that direction but what i feel and what i have seen to the patients this is this is a insulin resistance a strong insulin resistance at a hepatocyte level at a pancreatic level and the leptin resistance and insulin resistance at a hypothalamic level this is the sampraptya and pathophysiology of obesity which has been explained and this sampraptya is to be targeted we have to target insulin resistance we don't want to give any medicine which will have a emasification activity on med it will be the outcome of that activity. so emasification or reduction of the med can be an activity but it is the outcome of the main uh, pathology what we are working on so then what is the difference what is the exact pathophysiology working at a because shaitilya the word has come into prameha because in nidansthan the, there is no chapter on obesity there is a chapter on prameha which gives the idea about the metabolic disorders it is a prototype prameha chapter is a prototype of all metabolic disorders i have taken in that concern so sa vikruta dushtena medasa medaso medasa उपहिता शरीर क्लेद मनसाभ्या संसर्गम गच्छति स विकृतो दुष्टेन मेदसोपिता शरीर क्लेद मांस 
now see clay the and mouse are most important along with the me the mouse of them sansargat gachati clay the mouse your ki pramanat divrudhatvat in kapha doshas shariras cha udaka karmana anugraham karoti so there is a due to this udaka karmana sharira due to this clay the that is udaka karmana ti clay the purnadi di clay de ti ardri karoti so that is the laxity into the tissues due to the accumulation of some or other fluids which are not expected to remain at that tissue level that is creating low grade inflammation at that cellular level due to this clay the clay is no doubt is important i'm going to explain what we mean by clay so kapha prakop anadi so why there is a kapha prakop everybody knows us that diva swapna avyam madhura amla lavana sheeta snigdha guru pichila abhishandi again a missing point people can't understand what do you mean by abhishandi the granthakar has clearly mentioned the definition of abhishandi but we don't apply it very correctly when we are advising the diet controls to the patients so abhishandi dosh dhatu mal strotas atishay kled jan prapti jananam tad abhishandi that is a made that is this this uh, so definition is from sushur of abhishandi so kled is very important to create abhishand and here if you see the dushas in प्रमेह और इफ यू सी द दुशास और द द देयर इज अ शैथिल्य इन ईच एंड एवरी टिश्यू इन ओबेसिटी एज़ वेल एज़ इन प्रमेह और हाइपरलिपिडेमिक डिसऑर्डर्स और इन मेटाबॉलिक डिसऑर्डर्स क्लेद प्लेज एन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल टू क्रिएट अ लैक्सिटी इनटू ईच एंड एवरी टिश्यू सो वी एक्सप्लेन क्लेद एज इज इट इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर नो डाउट क्लेज इज एन फिजियोलॉजिकल फैक्टर इन द बॉडी व्हिच इज एसेंशियल फॉर द प्रॉपर डाइजेशन ऑफ द फूड एंड गेटिंग फूड असिमिलेटेड इनटू द धातु दैट्स व्हाई इट इज हैव बीन टेकन इनटू द uh ahar parinam karak bhav it is one of the important contents in the ahar parinam karak bhav its normalcy it is ease the digestion and is retained by sweat and is excreted by urine this is the normal physiology of the clade but when vitiated it is known to induce laxity in the body tissues declining their function as it is in the liquid form it is described that clade also liquefies the dhatus quantitatively quality no doubt it versions of the dhatus that's why there is the laxity in the tissue and that's why we say that no tissues are nourished other than meed but the quantitative laxity is also seen due to the clade it gives the dampness to the tissues and create laxity at a cellular level at a molecular level it may be intracellular level maybe at a point of mitochondria maybe at a point of cytoplasm maybe at a point of the cell wall due to the oxidation it is becoming more and more thick due to the excess of clade so it gives dampness its laxity blocking and putrefying are some of the meaning but it gets vitiated it shows the decomposition of the tissues clade in vitiated form can be one of the inflammatory factors responsible for creating laxity into the tissue now when the thinking if i tell patients that of metabolic disorders that you control water consumption people say what is the effect of water it is good for health we have learned it from first standard but as per the ayurved context this can create more clay and this understanding is very important in metabolic disorders the diet control should be monitored very very perfectly so the clay can be ascribed as an inflammation creating factor at cellular level in meed dhatu it can also be said that clay in vitiated state disturbs the micro environment of the tissues or the dhatus so this clay is to be targeted shaitilya of the dhatus is to be targeted that's very important so the altered fluid distribution which is in the form of clay is recognized as a com complication of lower metabolism at a cell level so all clay the formation is a dhatu agni mandya at every tissue level every cell level and relative over hydration versus cell dehydration and abnormal fluid regulation versus normal adaptation to hypersomatic stress could have different implication for obesity prevention and the treatment so it's very important to treat clay the in metabolic disorder now tell me how many of the people they target these type of pathologies like dhatu agni like clay the low grade inflammation consider it is not considering the modern medicine as well as ayurved we have to target all these pathologies at a cellular level and then we have to treat the patient when you, when it comes to obesity the first question how much weight you have reduced with that doctor or how much weight you have reduced with that treatment no that is a wrong question 
how much pathology you have inhibited that is the main question because the main treatment of metabolic disorder is to make an unhealthy dhatu a healthy dhatu or an unhealthy obese person a healthy obese person that should be our main target and that can be proven biochemically that can be proven endocrinologically that can be proven very nicely but the perfect and particular biomarkers are to be selected so low grade inflammation mitochondrial dysfunction uh, endoplasmic reticulum stress can it be linked as clear they, they can be due to clear the formation that is the big question of research so this type of uh, questions are to be taken then shleshma pittam cha medash cha mausam cha ati pravardhate shleshma pittam cha medash cha mausam cha ati pravardhate that is also important factor so maus dhatu is one of the most important dushas in pramya as well as in obesity looking towards the sequence of pathology in the tissue first med dhatu is vitiated which then infiltrate the maus dhatu as explained that maus dhatu is vitiated in kapha janya prameha as well as avarjanya prameha it is very essential to understand that smooth muscles as well as skeletal muscles are affected in obesity as well as prameha we know it because all the insulin majority of the insulin receptors are situated into the on the skeletal muscles many a times the uh, insulin receptors are there on the arteries and veins that's why the person land into atherosclerosis due to the inflammation first and then glycation so fatty infiltration in the skeletal muscles and oxidized lipid deposition into the endothelial layer of the arteries is the basic basic pathology observed in the muscles which has been clearly mentioned in our sanhitas that this pathology develops strong insulin resistance at skeletal muscles levels and also develop alteration in the glut receptors that is glut hormones that there are glut core hormones and these glut core hormones open the door of insulin at a insulin gate and then glucose enters into it so these glut core hormones are also affected into obesity and diabetes these are to be corrected very nicely with the ayurvedic drugs with the ayurved management whatever you have given even udavartan works very nicely here charak has clearly mentioned that udavartan is very important kriya in metabolic uh, santarpan janya vyadhi but we forget it udavartan can have impact on the blood flow hormones on the skeletal muscles this pathology develops strong insulin resistance creating more hunger pangs increased food demand whatever the sampraapti we have seen that sandukshayam agni aharam shoshayat api so this pathology can be compared with the hyper functioning of agni due to ahar janya vat avaranjanya avaranjanya vat so this is how we can explain the pathophysiology of <coughs> obesity and metabolic disorder this i am not going to waste the time because i have explained it the comorbidities are also very clearly uh, explained again that they have explained that meda sthire samrade sahasa eva aniladaya vikaran darunan krutva nashayat ashu jivitam nashayat ashu you can see many obese and metabolic disease patient having very acute myocardial infarction or very acute cerebrovascular accidents so this is nashayat ashu jivitam and vikaran darunan krutva so immediately the disease is created the complication is created the patient die so again they say that yukta kshuda sveda daurgandya alpa prana alpa prano alpa maithuna that is given by madhonidan and again madhonidan sir said that medasa avrutta margata pushyanti anye na dhatava except med no other tissues are nourished we have to pinpoint this that we have to make a nourishment to the other tissues and correct the med dhatu that is the main aim of treating obesity and metabolic disorders <clears throat> so in the market well, then what are the managements in the market one size does not fit all so market scenario is no personalization push purusham purusham viksham is not followed in the market in market we go and buy the medicines which are on the shelf and take it and for the obesity so or hyperlipidemia many people by their own mind they start arjuna rishta when they have hyperlipidemia or obesity or hypertriglyceridemia who told them it is by their own mind that they are taking so market scenario no personalization humans are unique with individual needs and requirements so right treatment for the right person at the right time so every person for medicine is totally different that should be targeted so obesity should not be considered as a disease a symptom it is not a disease all obese are not the same the underlying diseases are to be targeted by angshaansha sampraapti we have to go we have to look for the insulin resistance 
we have to look for low thyroids we have to look for leptin resistance we have to look for fatty livers we have to look for pcos we have to look because if i say that okay fatty liver is not mentioned in ayurved nobody is going to listen they want ayurved treatment for fatty liver they want ayurved treatment for pcos it is not mentioned still it is a metabolic disorder we have to include this disease into santarpan janya vyadhi and treat them as we are treating santarpan janya vyadhi that's the that's the basic principle behind that so <clears throat> the med medication should be customized medicine and diet as per the physique of the patient should be targeted pathology should be targeted not the fats complications and obesity targeted in the single given management that's very important that in a single given management that we are treating complication differently we are treating the this is differently no it should be given in the single given management very less in standard medicine should be given and as far as possible because no research work has been done very clearly with the metals and metabolic disorders as far as possible no metals should be used because because if we want to expand at this point okay whenever we will prove that metals are safe that is a different story but at this moment metals are not accepted in the western countries in the foreign countries no metals should be used in the management at present and after in india you can use it no issue then <clears throat> then associated Uh, what we call as hepatic steatosis or non-alcoholic fatty liver, or it may be fatty liver. I'll tell you one story, very important story here, regarding the gut flora and regarding the agni, what we consider and all these things. So many people, as we have seen, that Ayurveda has clearly elaborated that all the fruits are guru in nature, and in obesity and metabolic disorder, the word guru has come on the level. So all these fruits are guru to get digested. the gut flora is totally disturbed in metabolic disorder as well as in obesity when the bmi goes about 27 the gut flora changes permicutes bacteria increases and what happens still we are eating abishandi ahar still we are eating guru ahar many obese people they consume uh, watermelon because it is full of liquids but it is guru to get digested see its glycemic index many fruits are highly guru they are strictly contraindicated in metabolic disorders still people consume what happens these permicute bacteria they due to indigestion of these guru padarth guru substances these are fermented guru substances are fermented and they are converted into methyl alcohol and they are transferred from the gut to the liver and the liver gets fatty so whether the person is consuming alcohol or not consuming alcohol he will get a alcoholic fatty liver only if he is constantly consuming guru ahar that's why guru har is to be strictly contraindicated in all metabolic disorder that's very important the which lands into the fatty liver so in fatty liver the first hit is insulin resistance at the hepatocyte level and you can see that there is a reduction in the fatty oxidation there is increase in the fatty acid influx into the liver there is increased lipogenesis there is increased triglycerides and all is due to the increased insulin resistance and the first hit is at the hepatocyte level and the second is what we call as lipid peroxidation our management should target lipid peroxidation our management should target clade our management should control agni should correct agni our management should control tnf alpha and cytokine cascade whether these are to be called as arm whether they these are to, to be called as hypofunctioning of agni that is not a matter of discussion but whatever you do you correct arm you correct agni you correct the clade you correct the cycle Yes, you correct lipid peroxidation of TNF alpha. Whatever you want, correlation is a different thing. We will correlate it afterwards. But this we have to target when we are looking into metabolic disorders, obesity. Through Ayurved management, we have to look into all these things very perfectly. So basically, the adipose tissue itself is a big endocrine gland. It secretes many hormones, and the main hormone which is secreted is adiponectin and leptin. So these two hormones, adiponectin. and leptin are to be controlled very very nicely with our management so when our with our treatment when the adiponectin is getting corrected it shows that our management is working on insulin resistance it is creating insulin sensitivity it is reducing inflammation at the adipocyte level so adiponectin is inversely proportional to obesity more the weight less the adiponectin less the weight more the adiponectin in may the saratva more the weight more the adiponectin this way we have to match with the ayurved principles i'll again repeat in obesity adiponectin is inversely proportional to weight more the weight less the adiponectin less the weight more the adiponectin 
but in meda saratva it should be like that more the weight more the adiponectin it should be equal so that's how we can identify sara saratva with each and every tissue and then we can proceed further so <clears throat> i'll not go into these details yes then again many a times we are using basti into the treatment panchakarma or basti into the treatment basti has a specific role into obesity we are using lekhana basti or many types of bastis are used it has a very very important important role in correcting the gut and reducing the inflammation at the intestinal level large intestine because the short chain fatty acids which are created by the permicutes bacteria they are transformed from the inflamed alt, uh, intestines to the liver so when i am giving basti to the patient, i am checking with the patient it will not give within results within 20 days but it will definitely show the inflammation of the intestine is reduced and this inflammation of the intestine can be seen by the entero what we call as the hormones that is it may be cholecystokinin or myomyelin or enterostatin or uh, glp1 glp2 gip so there are number of biomarkers for basti lekhana basti these biomarkers are to be used when we are using basti into either metabolic disorders amnesia or obesity don't go just for weight management or don't just go for lipids lipid profiles will not tell us anything so early because our we have a just a scope of one or two months study for the researchers i am telling you or even in the opds also we have to give the results on the paper so we have to go for such biomarkers and such biomarkers can help us to tell the results of our medicine so what are the principles of the management of the metabolic disorders the principles of the management are that tatascha pratap prati paksham evam aushadham prayushyamanam ashu siddhyat siddhye sampadyate this is the quotation taken from the ashtang sangraha 23rd chapter that they say that kim viharena kim aharena kim aharena kupita vayu kim vihari yatha rukshena laguna shishirena va sahasena vega urudhena bhayena shokena iti tatascha tat prati औषधम प्रयुज्यम आशु सिद्धे यू कंट्रोल द कॉज अनफॉर्चुनेटली पीपल डोंट वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल द कॉज दो वी पीपल टेल करेक्ट डाइट कंट्रोल टू देम दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल द कॉज इफ वी आर कंट्रोलिंग द हेतुज एज पर सेड बाय शारंग अष्टांग संग्रहकार इफ वी आर कंट्रोलिंग द हेतुज दैट इज द वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वे टू मैनेज द डिज एंड वी नो द हेतुज दैट स्निक द गुरु madhura and shita are the main dietary hetus and sedentary lifestyle is the second main hetu of all the metabolic disorders we have to control it that is the main principle of the management correcting the srotoroads correcting the arms correcting the agniya jatragni correcting nutritious status of all the dhatus other than meda and keeping all the <coughs> marga so it is has been arga it all the marga that is srotas intact for proper nourishment of the dhatus that is rasayan this is the way how we have to manage how we have to look to the metabolic disorders the just giving lekhana medicine just just giving karshan to the patient doesn't work if we want a complete treatment till the rasayan management this should be with the way what i treat it can be it, it's not uh, I, i don't want to say that everybody should think in my direction people have different type of very good thought process treating metabolic disorders this is the way what we we treat the metabolic disorders and when it comes to the principles of management through modern medicine correcting the oxidative stress correcting the mitochondrial dysfunction inflammation at a cellular level correcting the gut flora correcting the appetite control system and correcting the nutrition are very very important when we treat metabolic disorders and basically it is actually it can be treated with a non pharmacological intervention also every time there is no need to give any medication and big medication just controlling all these things by a proper dietary measures dietary measures and correcting it by the lifestyle it can be treated very nicely so there are different type of medicines which has been deepan pachan medicine so there are different type of google kalp medohar google nava google all these are there in the market it depends on the clinician what type of medicine he has to take as per what is the pathology which has has occurred into the patient and then this type of drugs are to be selected and then we have give it to the patient just i am going for the last uh, two three slides there are many quotations there are many sayings that in uh, <clears throat> metabolic disorders we can have ghee ayurveda has uh, allowed to consume ghee to the patients and people allow uh, uh, to consume ghee to the patient so here in the yajna purusha adhyay they have made it very clear that the uh, <laughs> पथ्यम तवद घृतम 
तद अतिमात्रम अपथ्यम बहती काले च वसंते अपथ्यम संस्कार विरुद्धम द्रव्यम असंस्कृत अपथ्यम भूमो च अनुपम भूनो भूमो च अनुपाय अनुपाय अपथ्यम एवं देहे अति स्थूले दोषे च कफे अपथ्यम नाउ आई थिंक मेजोरिटी ऑफ अस वी आर इन टू मेटाबोलिक सिंड्रोम्स सो वी हैव टू टेक घी अंडर कंट्रोल दिस इज अ क्लियर क्लियर इंडिकेशन गिवन बाय चक्रपाणी इन द एज पुरुषी अध्याय दे हैव सेड दैट इट इज टू बी टेकन अंडर कंट्रोल एंड दोज हु आर ओबेज एंड दोज हु हैव फर्स्ट कफ दोष डोमिनेंस इट इज स्ट्रिक्टली कफे च अपथ्यम इट इज स्ट्रिक्टली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड सो वी हैव टू राइट इट टू द पेशेंट इज स्ट्रिक्टली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो वी आर वी आर यूजिंग सिस्टम वाली ओबेसिटी then uh, different type of managements we are using we have created sisemol and sisemenol we are using in obesity to reduce the lipid peroxidation specifically into the adipose tissue these are our uh, management because of the lack of time i am not explaining it just i want to explain very important uh, factor that we have come across only three slides are remaining so the that uh, what we call call as uh, <clears throat> importance along with obesity so kruchya vivayata a complication of obesity and there is a herbal management for it what are the risk factors so actually insulin resistance is the emerging risk factor in metabolic syndrome obesity sedentary lifestyle so these are the risk factor for what we call as the erectile dysfunction these are also the risk factor for endothelial dysfunction so ed is equal to ed means endothelial dysfunction is equal to erectile dysfunction why this ed is equal to ed you can see the lumen of the penile artery in the first stage penile artery the lumen is 1 to 2 mm in early erectile dysfunction or early uh, what we call an endothelial dysfunction you can see the penile artery lumen going very very small is bigger than penile artery so whenever there is erectile dysfunction you can think about coronary artery disease and here due to the contrary due to the narrowing of the penile artery there is a erectile dysfunction in metabolic syndrome due to the deposition or due to the hardening of the penile artery or due to the uplepan of the pichil doshas of kapha there is uplepan or due to the what we what we call as the atherosclerotic changes into the penile artery there is the now in such condition how can vajikar medicines work vajikar medicines will never work here here we can say that risk factors of the endothelial dysfunction erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease are same when it comes with metabolic syndrome when it comes with obesity when it comes with prameha then here the vajikar medicine don't work very correctly here you can see the property of lasuna snigdha ushnascha vrishyascha lasuna katuko guruhu shushkani kapavatagnyo anyas desham phalani cha so you have to use such type of medicine which will secret nitrous oxide lachun lachun or garlic has a property of secreting nitric oxide into the coronaries as well as in the penile artery dilating them very correctly and correcting the erectile dysfunction so this type of managements of the complication is to be done so there are many complications and they are to be treated very wisely taking into consideration the dose dominance the dushyata or the comorbidities of the thing of the of the metabolic syndrome or obesity all these things are to be taken into consideration and then we can treat the patient through modern view and through ayurved view with the complete herbal management keeping all our ayurved principles completely intact so agni am strotorod dhatva agni mandya they are to be targeted first not we are we don't want to target the outlook of the disease we have to target the path and we are targeting the pathophysiology then we can target it very correctly so thank you thank you very much for the silent listening and thank you for the opportunity given by this organization to share my views among you